Hello, my name is George Hewn. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make bubble charts in OPSI and some of the useful things that you can do with them. Bubble charts are useful for looking at the relationships between small numbers of projects because they allow you to see three dimensions of data at once, represented by the x-axis, the y-axis, and the size of the bubble. There are two starting points for bubble charts in OPSI. The first one is from the portfolio form itself, so we can open the portfolio form here and click on the charts button at the top of the form to open the charts form. This is the form that you can use to make a variety of useful charts. However, we're going to select the bubble chart button and then click next to open the bubble chart form. The bubble chart form is all menu driven. The first thing we're going to do is to name the chart value v cost v NPV. Next, we're going to select our values using the drop down menus. So for our y axis, we're going to select overall value. For our x axis, we're going to select cost. As an aside, note that we can also select ordered by rank for the x axis, meaning that the bubbles would be ordered from highest rank to the lowest rank along the axis. And for the bubble size, we're going to select net present value. Now, before I click save, I want to mention that the use weighted values check marks lets you substitute the weighted attribute values for the actual attribute values. The weighted attribute values are the values that are summed to make the overall project value score. So we'll click save and open chart to see the bubble chart we've just created. Now as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, you can see that bubble charts can be extremely valuable for small portfolios but become increasingly complex with larger portfolios. This portfolio contains 32 projects. But when we're looking at a bubble chart like this, the first thing to think about is what is the most valuable quadrant and what is the least valuable quadrant. So we want projects of high value and low cost, which would be in the upper left quadrant, and consequently the lower right quadrant is our least desirable quadrant. So we can toggle open the bottom of the form to get some different looks at this portfolio. One thing that is useful is to turn it into a scatter chart just to see the locations of the projects in the XY axis plane and we do this by clicking the equal bubbles checkbox. We can see how the projects are distributed in the XY plane. Notice that if we place the cursor on the bubble we can see the name and what the values are for that project and if we double click on that bubble we can open up the project form and drill down into it. In the current display, the limits of the axes are controlled by the actual maximum and minimum value for the attributes. By clicking on the full whole button, we can see how the projects are distributed relative to the best outcomes and worst outcomes for the attributes. We can also see the uncertainty that is associated with each project in this view by clicking on the uncertainty checkbox. Now, let's take a look at some of the ways that bubble charts can be used to study your portfolios. So, let's bring the portfolio form to the front and sort by the last optimization. Next, let's select the projects that were chosen in the last optimization and then click Show Subset. Now, if we click back to the bubble chart, we can see that only the selected projects in the subset are displayed. And you can also do this with portfolio views, which are saved selected subsets as we demonstrated in another video. Let's go back to the portfolio and we're going to modify a group of projects so that we can see the difference in the bubble chart form. So let's select show all to display all the projects again and this time we're going to select the projects that were rejected in the optimization. And then we're going to use the modified selection menu item to open the modified selection form. This form allows us to modify subsets of projects at one time so we can modify attribute values, uncertainty values, colors, and patterns. In this case we're going to modify the pattern of the subset of projects that were rejected in the optimization. So we'll click on the Pattern tab and then go to the Pattern pop-up menu and select a different pattern and then click Modify. 
Then we return to the portfolio form and click show all at the top of the form to display all the projects again. And now we can return to the bubble chart form and we can see that the projects with the solid colors were the ones that were selected by the optimizers and the projects with the pattern color were the ones that were rejected. Now if we close the bubble chart form and return to the decision manager, we can see that the bubble chart has been saved under the bubble charts tab. We can modify, open, and create new charts from this place in the decision manager form. So, as you can see, bubble charts are a very useful way of studying your portfolios relative to different attribute dimensions, and Opsi has made it very easy for you to use them. And you can try it for yourself on your own data by signing up for the Opsi free trial at our website. My name is George Hune, and thanks for watching.